Bum, 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 bum. All right, here we are, episode 63 of Merriweather's World. Wow. Uh, just keep pumping these babies out. Cool. Um, hi. <laughs> I am your host, Dr. Mark Merriweather Vorderbrogen, author of Idiot's Guide Foraging, creator of the Foraging Texas website, author of many other articles on foraging and patents and all sorts of random weird stuff like that. Whew. All right. So coming to you from uh, live from the dining room, as usual, talking to you tonight about elderberry. But as usual, we need to start it with uh, a few odds and ends. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Foraging Texas website, let me put up a link here to that. Oops, was that working? Okay, cool. Hey, good evening, Kathleen. You seem to be the first person here. Oh, 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 Carrie's here. Hey, Carrie, Carrie, Carrie. Okay, so yeah, uh, you know, everything I do can be found at www.foragingtexas.com. Uh, normally, I would also announce uh, upcoming classes, but the one upcoming class that I have this summer is now filled up. So uh, the next ones won't be uh, looking like until August 1st, though that will be up in Dallas. Um, other than that, there might be something this summer at Vista Brewing outside of Austin and Driftwood, but we're still working that out too. Whoa, there's a whole bunch of people here. Okay, big tribal hello to everyone. There's way too many people to 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 do individual shout outs tonight. Uh, I will say, uh, wait, uh, Clarissa. So what I'll mainly be talking about is Sambuca candenesis, the most common North American uh, elderberry. So other things on the housekeeping, of course, I have to give a shout out to uh, well, my book. Remember, with the Idiot's Guide Foraging, I actually don't get any royalties from this. The only way I will ever earn another dime from it is if you purchase it from the specific link that I am about to put up. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. And what this is, it's a link to my Amazon store. And so though DK Publishing doesn't give me any money if you buy the book, if you buy it from this specific Amazon link, Amazon pays me 74 cents. So that's pretty cool. Um, over the years, it adds up very slowly, but it adds up. And I thank you. Uh, also, if you don't have a copy of this book, uh, something that's been going on is uh, – Foraging Texas is run on some really ancient computers, and it's really limiting what I can do. So a uh, pledge drive has started up. You can see how to donate over on Foraging Texas and get accustomed to all the other amazing and wonderful things there. Uh, but if you use the donation link, uh, sending me at least $5 or anything else, or if you've already sent in money to help donate towards the Foraging Texas Computer Fund, uh, there's actually a list of the computer and the, the things I need to bring Foraging Texas into the 20th decade of the 2000s uh, thing. Anyway, modernize the stuff. It's great that I love teaching about ancient plants, but it's hard to do with ancient computers. Anyway, if you throw five bucks my way, you go into a drawing uh, for either a copy of the Idiot's Guide Foraging or... Two of the amazing Wazoo Survival Forging bandanas uh, created for Wazoo Survival by me and Dr. Nicole uh, Apelian, uh, Apelian, Dr. Nicole Apelian, uh, the multi time contestant on the History Channel's Alone show. Uh, as you can see, we worked really hard to make an amazingly useful uh, bandana. The plants were picking to picked to be the most useful edible and medicinal pan plants <laughs> across North America. So really, really good thing there. And if you just want to outright buy one, let me put a link up for that. And I will say Wazoo Survival is 
one of my sponsors. So if you do buy this bandana, they actually send me uh, some money. Also, I got a shout out to Wazoo Survival. They are the ones that pay for the streaming software I'm using to do this show. So multiple reasons why Wazoo Survival are absolutely awesome uh, company. Uh, Houston-based, ex-NASA uh, engineers, really, really, really awesome. And this is like out of focus. Ooh, focus on me. Ta-da. OK. Uh, a couple other sponsors, those of you also know uh, my long-term relationship with Uncommon Bees. So Uncommon Bees makes uncommon honey. Uh, all sorts of different infused honey. My personal favorite is the Buzz Honey. Imagine uh, an energy drink in honey form. So the taurine and some of the other components, uh, the green uh, coffee beans infused into honey. Uh, so you get all the, the power with none of the crap. They also have a whole bunch of different herbal infused. Like the elderberry seems appropriate for tonight's topic, don't you think? But their elderberry uh, honey, let me, let me show you this because this is awesome. This is made with local Texas elderberry and, of course, their own uh, Houston uh, beehives. So really, really, really great stuff. Uh, there's a website there. Oh, that's so good. Uh, not only do they have the herbal infused honeys, they also have the CBD type uh, honeys and wax based creams and salves and, and just an amazing uh, number of things. But wait, there's more. Since we're talking about herbs and herbal medicine and all that, I have to give a shout out to herbs. Plant medicine is the best medicine. Uh, they're located up in East Texas. Uh, he is my main supplier of raw herbs and dried herbs and herbs I want to blend into things. But more importantly, uh, Ricardo there, Ricardo Shilichelli, uh fixes me up with a, a constant stream of Mark's Battle Mage Tea. This is an amazing mixture of energizing and adapted, adaptogen herbs to keep me going, doing all the crazy ass stuff I do. So shout out to, to Ricardo at Herbs and note, uh, if you use the coupon code, what, what coupon code does he use? Ah, Forking Weeds, the secret for uh, foraging Texas greeting, Forking Weeds. Uh, you get an extra special discount. And of course, Uncommon Bees, also with the Forking Weeds, you get an amazing discount of 25% off now until midnight. Otherwise, it is 10% off the rest of the time. Okay, two more sponsors I really got to talk about because I absolutely love them. Um, back when I have time, you know, I like to go out in the woods. And when I'm out in the woods, I'm not on a trail. I am busting through the underbrush, uh, seeking, stalking, uh, everything in sight. And so I need gear that can handle off-trail sort of stuff. And so luckily, let me see it here. Campcraft Outdoors. This is a company here, uh, well, here uh, here in the United States, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky. No, I suddenly forget which. But they make handcrafted, hand-sewn, hand-waxed canvas backpacks and satchels and haversacks uh, and gear bags, things that can actually handle the thorns and the the you know, all the terrible things that you find off the trail where I'm, you know, living my life. So I hate, if I'm going to be out in the woods, I don't want to be wearing a big mound of plastic on me. And so Campcraft uh, Outdoors, they supply the old school materials, the canvas, the leather, the brass, that sort of thing. The so things that makes me feel good to bring, you know, out in the wild with me. None of this plastic stuff. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's just me. And for some reason, that link didn't make it to the uh, YouTube part. So let me try that. Maybe that worked. Okay. Um, one more, and then we'll get on to the elderberries. But a special shout out to Fear and Dread Shop. Uh, if you are looking for uh, survival-ish type stuff, uh, and I don't know if you noticed, there's a hurricane, well, a tropical storm out in the Gulf of Mexico. It looks like it's heading towards Louisiana. 
Um, maybe it will, maybe it won't. But like I get uh, my first gear, uh, first aid gear from them, and they do have a coupon code. But Fear and Dread and Jacqueline uh, Parker here, longtime fan, uh, her husband owns a shop. This is what's called an individual patrol officer's kit. And you can see it has an emergency tourniquet, uh, trauma dressings, gauze, uh, gloves. Basically, uh, in the case of a really horrific injury, you yeah, rip this open and you do your first aidy type stuff. Okay, quick question, Jacqueline. Um, yeah, the leather bags are really heavy. These are nice. I mean, they're heavier than nylon, but uh, I mean, they're, they're they're like the the old school weight wise. They're like the the school backpacks we had when well when I was a kid. You're you're a lot younger than me. Um, I wish there was a way to show it because it's 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 heavy canvas, but not super heavy, and it's way lighter uh, than like the leather bags. Or if you're familiar with Duluth packs or Frost River uh, bushcraft bags, oh, way, way lighter than that. Okay. Um, oh, and just one last thing. Uh, if you're wondering where you can see more of me at the end of this show, if for some reason you actually want to see more of me, uh, don't forget my YouTube channel there. Uh, and also in the morning, 7.30 to 8, on weekday mornings, Monday through Friday, here at the Facebook Forging Texas site and at the YouTube video, uh, YouTube link I just put up, there is the donut shop at the beginning of the world where like a thousand of us get together and just talk plant. Well, this morning we talked quite a bit about worms, um, but uh, it's a free flowing conversation. We're all drinking coffee and eating whatever we have for breakfast and generally hanging out together and basically getting some social contact and bonding in this crazy time. Whew. Okay. Oh, and one last thing. In honor of tonight's uh, subject of elderberry chemistry, the drink is an elderberry margarita made using normal margarita ingredients, but adding my own personal twist of liquid smoke because, you know, you got to have a campfire. And if you can see it in there, but a whole mess of elderberry flowers floating around. So, ching ching. Ah, that's good. <laughs> Margaritas are one of my many weaknesses. Yes, yeah, so shout out to all the Doko tribe, and hopefully the tribe will be bigger tomorrow. Okay, now we are finally ready to start why you actually came here. And let me just pop this up. Elderberries. This is the third week now that I'll be talking about elderberry. The first two weeks, you can go back on the YouTube channel and see them, was talking about all the different poisonous mimics of elderberry, which there are surprisingly a lot of. Finished that, and now this week, we are getting into the chemistry of the elderberry. Hey, Anna Curtis, you have a great question, a perfect, let me throw it up here. Whoop, whoop. You already jumped ahead. Uh, here we go. Should I harvest little white flowers or wait for the berries? That is the first thing I am going to talk about. So let us jump to the slide. Well, okay. So an overview of tonight. Uh, I'm going to start with a general comparison of the flowers versus the berries and, you know, why you'd use and when you would use one or the other, followed by an in-depth review of the different types of chemicals in there, what these chemicals do, and also special for you, Tina, the thermal stability of these chemicals. Because if you are making, you know, cooking things with them, uh, heat can play a role in uh, some thermal degradation sort of thing. So, all right, and one other thing. Uh, so, like I said, uh, on my screen, the cursor is huge. Uh, like it's it's covering the entire F and L of flowers, but it looks to me on the screen you're seeing, it's still itty bitty. So uh, you'll have to look really close at the screen. Okay, so general comparison, flowers versus berries. In the end, uh, I'll, I'll jump to the, 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 the takeaway message. If possible, go with fresh flowers. If you can't go with fresh flowers, then go with either dried uh, flowers or berries. 
So the fresh flowers have the highest concentration of most of the medicinal compounds. So if you had to pick one for all the amazing powers that elderberry has, uh, looking at the chemistry and looking at everything going on, the fresh flowers are should be your first choice. Now, if you allow the flowers to dry, if you can't do something with them, you know, immediately after harvest, so you let them dry out, they actually lose uh, some potency. They lose some of the compounds that you're after. The end result is that they're about the same medicinal properties as the dried berries. Now, fresh berries, you do not want to use fresh berries. You want to cook the berries or you want to dry the berries before you actually do anything where you're going to consume the berries. The reason being is the fresh berries have uh, assorted cyanide compounds in them that are bad. Uh, so you don't want to eat the fresh berries. Now, if you make a Coke syrup or ferment them into wine or something like that, that takes care of the cyanide. But just eating fresh berries or tincturing fresh berries or making a, well, I guess a tea is okay because that's technically cooking them. But uh, using fresh berries in a process that doesn't heat, dry, or ferment them, uh, it's going to lead to some health issues. Now, once the berries have dried, uh, from an overall medicinal level properties, everything like that, um, they would be pretty much equal to the dried flowers. The one thing that the berries have that the flowers do not is the anthocyanins or cyanidins, um, which are really extremely potent antioxidants, which uh, I'll go into the specific properties you get from those later on in the, in the, the talk tonight. But the flowers, lacking that purple color, lack those anthocyanidins and cyanidins. So those are the one thing that the berries have that the flowers don't have. And as you see tonight, when we talk about the power of these, uh, you can kind of decide what you want to do. Oh, okay, can you infuse fresh flowers and carrier oils for skin recipes? Yes, Cynthia. That will work uh, a number of the compounds, and I actually have the structures here awaiting you, uh, are such that they're soluble in a lot of different things. So that is a, that's good. Okay. So one last time, fresh flowers have overall the most medicinal benefits, especially in immune system and a number of other properties. The dried flowers and the dried berries are pretty much equal in all those properties, except that the berries have the extra uh, medicinal compounds, the anthos, uh, anthocyanins and anthocyanidins uh, that are really potent antioxidants. And you've probably heard over and over how good antioxidants are for you. And so as we go through tonight, you will get a better idea of that of just the powers of these. Okay. Pause while I take a sip. Okay. Since we've been talking about anthocyanidins and cyanins, um, I'm going to start with that. So these, I want to say this, there are a bazillion of this type of molecule out in the world, a number of plants, pretty much any brightly colored purple red plant has these molecules in them. Nice thing about that then is you can get them from assorted other places, not just the elderberry. So if you make some elderberry uh, uh, medication, a tincture from the elderberry flowers, and then go eat an apple or a grapes or strawberries or tomatoes or anything like that, you're going to get uh, a bunch of anthrocyanidins. So the looking at the chemistry structure here, uh, for those of you who have seen me talk about chemistry in the past, uh, I explained that chemists are lazy. And one of the things we, we don't like doing is we don't like writing hydrogens connected to carbons. 
And quite frankly, we don't like writing carbons if we don't have to, because carbons make up the overall backbone of all the molecules we're talking about. And so rather than have a line and a C and more lines, it's just nicer to make a bunch of lines. So what this means is everywhere where you see an angle, where there's a change, where the lines kind of meet and then go off in another direction, imagine a carbon at that point. So here, uh, number five, there is a carbon there. It has two bonds over to carbon number 10. It has one bond over to carbon number six, and it has one bond to this alcohol group, this OH group there. So in elderberries, the two main molecules are the ones I show here. The top one is the cyanidin-3-glucoside, uh, and then the lower one is cyanidin 3 sambucoside. <laughs> and basically what it is is the, uh, what we call a, well, a, a tri-ring structure here. This is, this three-ring structure here is what generally is considered to be a flavonoid. And we'll talk about flavonoids later because there are other flavonoids out there. But when you start sticking the sugar group onto the three position, that's when you get all sorts of funky colors going and all sorts of really powerful antioxidant properties. <laughs> Sherry, uh, sorry, just not as well. Look at the pretty pictures. Don't worry, in a second, we're, it's going to hopefully make sense. But... Uh, you know, I, like I said, I have a master's in medicinal chemistry, a PhD in physical organic chemistry. I live, breathe uh, chemicals. So to me, I look at this and can immediately picture the three-dimensional structure, the rotation, steric hindrance. Uh, I can probably make a guess at Gibbs free energy, uh, things like that. Um, in your case, just look at the cool, like, oh, look, it's, 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 it's a horse chasing a caterpillar. You know, things like that. Or two frogs dancing and one has his tongue stuck to a giant ant. Because <laughs> that's what most people do. Okay. So, hmm, all right. Got a flower in my mouth. Let me, uh, for those of you into the chemistry, let me put up some links for you to what I'm talking about, and for Tina, especially there for you, Tina, there's an article on the heat stability of these molecules, or anthocyanidins in general. Um, and the issue with them, if you bring them up to 100 degrees Celsius, so if you are boiling them uh, above 100 degrees Celsius, you after 30 minutes, you will have destroyed about half of them. So. Uh, that's one of the things, if you are boiling a sugar water elderberry flower concoction down to make a hard candy, and you're boiling, well, for one thing, if you're boiling a sugar water uh, blend, then you are going to exceed the 100 degrees Celsius, because that's going to be boiling above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so yeah, you, you are breaking the elderberry down. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, oh, Tina. Yeah, you, you tell me that a lot, and that's okay, because I adore you, too. So, uh, yeah. So, these are the key things. Let me uh, go over here. Whoop. Okay, so what do these molecules do? What do these bright purple molecules, why would you be interested in having them? Yeah, Deborah, so you are making antioxidants. You are losing antioxidants if you are making jelly. Um, not all of them but you are losing some. So why you want these molecules? So they are powerful antioxidants, and this gives them a number of abilities. Uh, if you remember anything about antioxidants, one of their key things is they go around scavenging what are called free radicals. Free radicals are extremely reactive molecules that uh, are created in our body as our body interacts with a lot of the uh, chemicals in the world, uh, not just synthetic, but um, there's a number of reactive chemicals, uh, both natural and artificial, that the body just comes in contact with you know, throughout its entire life. And the purpose, or one of the, excuse me, main uses of the antioxidants is is take care of these these you know 
things that are ripping up your other cells. They're, think of them like, like hand grenades just floating through your body and just randomly destroying things. So the antioxidants, they go and they defuse the hand grenade, render it you know, unexplodable, and get rid of it. So by doing that, uh, one of the things they do is they help uh, protect the integrity of your DNA. Remember, the DNA is a genetic code that tells your body what to do. The, it's also very, very susceptible to damage from these free radicals. So if these free radicals can make it into the nucleus of the cells, they can start destroying the DNA, which has all sorts of bad effects on that cell. That cell no longer has its operating system telling it what to do. And so all sorts of bad things can happen. Or worse, uh, it can actually uh, result in improper commands going out, causing cancers. So uh, a big thing about antioxidants is they help reduce the chance of cancers. So that is good. Okay, another thing about this particular class of molecules is they are somewhat natural estrogen uh, hormone mimics. And so they can work in the body in a similar way of, of kind of modulating, modulate, yeah, modulating the whole estrogen cycle sort of thing. So if you're producing too much, it can kind of tone it down. If you're not producing enough, it can raise it up some. Um, so that is good. And don't forget, men and women both need estrogen. Men use a lot smaller amounts. That's why we're big, dumb, stupid bricks going into, you know, fights and battles and, you know, rushing into burning buildings to save people, but you get the drift. Um, so the, uh, an estrogen, so estrogenic support. They're, they're helping maintain the proper levels, male and female, of estrogen levels. Another thing is anti-inflammatory. Uh, so if you have issues, uh, and it's kind of interesting, especially when you see later on, but if the, the body is starting to like attack itself or just generally become swollen and inflamed for a reason, it helps reduce that. It strengthens blood vessels. So the, the connective tissue of the blood vessels, uh, it can weaken and become uh, more permeable than it's supposed to, or, you know, God forbid, an aneurysm or something like that. So the anthocyanins uh, and cyanidins, they help cross-link or weave the tissues of the blood vessels together more. Uh, to what they are supposed to be like. Okay, uh, one thing also that they do is they do increase uh, cytokine production. So cytokine are the, you know, if you think about it, you know, part of the warrior system of the immune system going off and attacking infections. And that's one of the things that makes elderberry so good for helping you fight infections is it speeds up the response time and the overall number of, of things needed to destroy the invaders. Okay, just a second here. Now, you notice I have a little asterisk by increased cytokine production um, because uh, two things about that. Actually, several things. First off, if you have a serious autoimmune disease, uh, even though the anthocyanins in general are anti-inflammatory, the specific ones in the elderberry do increase the strength and response of the immune system. So if you have an autoimmune system where you're already attacking yourself, the elderberry can make it worse. Uh, another thing, if you uh, receive some sort of organ transplant and are now on immune suppressive uh, drugs, to keep your body from attacking this foreign heart valve or this foreign knee or something like that. Uh, again, the anthocyanins in elderberry uh, could cause problems there. So it's something to keep in mind. It's not a cure-all for everything. They're like, you know, everything else in nature, there, there's still issues you need to keep in mind if you're taking this. And the two big ones are if you have an autoimmune disease or if you uh, are on, or for some reason, are on something to suppress your immune system. Make sense? Okay. 
Just taking a okay. Just uh, just a shout out to Adam Anderson. What about brewing wine from elderberries? That removes the cyano uh, the the cyanide from the berries. So fermenting them is another way of getting rid of the cyanide in the fresh berries. Okay, moving on. We got a whole lot to talk about tonight. So uh, along with those particular anthocyano, the, the, the anthocyanin bins or cyan, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other flavonoid molecules. So the flavonoids, that's what we call this, that still has that three ring structure with a whole bunch of alcohol groups on it. Uh, but then in this number three position where the anthocyanidins had the sugars, they have some other shrubbery that we won't go into. Um, there is a number of these flavonoids in the elderberries, uh, kerosin, camphorol, myrosinitin, rutin. Um, these all have medicinal benefits, which we'll talk about. From a stability point of view, one of the interesting things about these is in the human body, uh, they actually get broken down pretty quickly. In one to two hours, these particular compounds are gone. Um, but while they're in you, they are doing some really great stuff. Boiling, like the previous ones, it's, it's kind of common for the flavonoids, is uh, oops, that they still, you lose a lot of them uh, when you heat it. So if you take it up above 100 degrees Celsius or, you know, 220, or sorry, 212 Fahrenheit, uh, you run into problems that after 30 minutes, 50% of them have been destroyed. You may have noticed uh, when you are making jelly from something really brightly colored that sometimes that color seems to fade. But if you add some acid, it comes back. And that is one of the things about flavonoids is if you can add a little bit of acid, if you can lower the pH some, it actually increases their stability to heat. So that's kind of useful, especially if you're making stuff out of them. Okay. Uh, so general structure. Now let's talk about each one because I love chemistry. Okay, so the kerosentin, uh, it is shown to be anti-cancer. So it doesn't have a, a, a long time in your body, but while it's there, it's, it's uh, doing some really great preventative anti-cancer type actions. Uh, and the effects of that last a fair uh, long time. That's one of the reasons you would probably want to be taking elderberry, you know, every day if you are, you know, able to do that. Uh, the kerosetin is also anti-inflammatory. Um, one of the really cool things about it, though, it is uh, really strong at lipid peroxidation. What this means is the fancy spanchy chemistry way of saying, you know that cholesterol that's clogging your arteries? This chemical comes through and starts breaking it up. So it attacks the bad lipids in your blood and starts breaking them up. And so to a, a state where they can't start plating out or you know, collecting in your arteries. So think of it as like you know, Drano for your blood vessels. Very, very, very awesome. Um, that being said, it does help with overall platelet aggregation. So a number of compounds, natural uh, compounds, especially some anti-inflammatory ones, uh, can lead to uh, excess bleeding if you're cut. Uh, this molecule does not do that. It actually helps with the platelet aggregation. Um, and while the anthrocyanins uh, are kind of cross-linking and strengthening the overall strength of the blood vessels, the the kerosetin is helping with the uh, proper permeability of the capillary. Remember, the capillaries is where the blood is finally leaving the vessels and moving into the tissues. It's at the, all the fine capillaries. And so you need a certain amount of permeability to them. And so it helps uh, get that right level of permeability. Uh, Deborah, yes, yeah, citric acid is an acid that will help with the uh, increase the acidity of the blend you're making. 
So, uh, Nick, ideally you need to well, I'll put your question up here. Um, whoops, did it go up? Okay. Do you have to add the acid before the heat or can it be retroactive? You need to add it before the heat uh, because the acids basically start glomming on to those hydrogen and oxygen groups on these flavonoids and on the anthocyanidins and basically form a net that holds it together and kind of shields it from the effect of the heat. So, okay, we get to go really chemistry now. Heat is just movement. So as a molecule gets hotter, it starts moving more and flexing and jumping around. And as it's doing that, it is cracking the whip. And it can start moving around so quickly that it'll fling parts of it off. And so if you can increase the sludge on the molecule so it can't move as quickly, uh, it, it, it helps protect it from the heat. Does that make sense? Uh, it's like uh, you know, dumping. Okay, uh, it's like okay, you can whip around a, a a thin string really quickly, but a big heavy rope or a hose you can't go around. It. There's just a mass thing there. So the acids, from what I've been able to determine, uh, basically do what's called hydrogen bonding to the OH groups and just add an extra weight to the molecule so it can't fling itself around as much uh, as it heats up. But you need to have it there beforehand because if you heat it up without them, the thing will fly apart and you can't put it back together. Chemistry is cool. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kerosene. Uh, and that's one, you know, basically, uh, you take, whoops, I got to go on this side. This OH group here, you stick a particular type of sh shrubbery. The, the changes between these three molecules here is basically the shrubbery that is attached to this oxygen here that, you know, some plant or something has put in there. Okay. The next one, the camphorol, uh, its main thing is it reduces, well, it, it interferes with a bunch of signals uh, between cancerous DNA nuclei and the cellular mechanisms. The end result is the cancer has a big, uh, a, a big problem now doing its mutant control of the cell. It can't cause, or, you know, it can't tell the cell, okay, you know, split and split and split. So long story short, uh, it reduces the ability of the cancer cells both to just replicate, you know, or split the reproduction, but it also interferes with the overall metastasis where the cells break off and travel through the body and find some new place to start over. Um, so really, 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 really handy. So really, really good thing there. And again, <laughs> uh, the effects act, last a little bit longer because uh, basically, once it gets into that cell, it screws it up for a long time. Uh, it's only as it eventually makes its way to the liver uh, where it gets broken down. Um, so there's that. Uh, drinking game. Every time it refers to MP, we drink. MP? Okay. Um, so there's that. So you got this thing. This molecule in elderberry that's it's that's, that's, that's reducing the chance of cancer from spreading, you know, as a tumor or to other parts of the body. Pretty amazing. Another one in there, the rutin. Uh, this is an anti neuro uh, inflammation thing. So, uh, what this means, if there's something that's causing inflammations of the neurons in your brain, this helps reduce that. So diseases or even certain head traumas, things like that. Um, if you got the elderberry floating through your bloodstream, uh, this is going to help protect that from, you know, the, the sort of inflammation of the neurons. Because uh, that's a bad thing. You, you, you don't want your neurons inflamed. Uh, another thing they've shown is it's a, it's a fairly potent antidepressant. Uh, I don't know the exact mechanism, if it's a serotonin, uh, you know, if it increases serotonin by preventing the breakdown of serotonin or tricks the body into making more serotonin or what, 
but there's definite uh, studies. And did I put them up? Excuse me. Uh, flavonoids. I think I put them up, but I'm going to put them up again uh, just because they're really cool. So, okay. Uh, boom, boom, boom. There. It hopefully went up. Okay. So uh, there's some studies in there that show the antidepressant uh, abilities of the rutin. So that's really cool. Another thing that it does, because uh, it's doing all this cool stuff in the brain, is it's been shown to improve the fine motor control of patients that have suffered some sort of brain damage, either from an injury or from uh, certain diseases like Alzheimer's. So uh, as things start to go wrong in the brain, uh, fine motor control starts to be lost. And they've shown that this particular flavonoid, the rutin, helps with that. It helps the person regain control of their body. I'm really excited. Can you tell I'm excited? Elderberry is awesome. Um, uh, like, like if I had to pick two favorite medicinal plants, it would be elderberry and burdock root. So there's that. Um, Okay, I am shooting through here. Uh, oh, Monty Python. Uh, oh, okay, Monty Python. Oh, elderberry. Okay, 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 now I got it. I'm going to drink to that. Oh, I'm telling you, if you haven't mixed liquid smoke with the lime juice that you rub on the rim of your, your cup before dipping it in the salt for your margarita, try it. It's awesome. Okay, Julie, the specific, uh, let me put this up here. Julie Chisholm asks, would that help with Parkinson's? I'm not sure. The specific studies I saw were on Alzheimer's and also brain trauma. Um, that being said, I would suspect it would help with Parkinson's, but that's just a, what we call a swag, a scientific wild ass guess. But, uh, I would think it might. Okay. Whew. Wow. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, we good with these flavonoids because we got more. Nope, we got more. Oh, no, we don't. Now we got phenolic acids. And before we were looking at things with multiple ring structures, uh, this time we're looking at uh, what are called phenol rings with shrubbery. And if I can do the circle thing, a phenol ring is a six carbon benzene ring with an alcohol stuck to one of the carbons. And then this is just extra shrubbery. This double bonded oxygen, so you have a carbon here. It has two bonds to an oxygen and one bond to an oxygen. And that oxygen is also bonded to a hydrogen. This whole unit here. This carbon, oxygen, whoop, whoop. Uh, this carbon, oxygen, and hydroxyl group is known as a carboxylic acid. Yay, chemistry. Wait, we're drinking? Okay. Now, phenolic acids, they have all sorts of properties, too. We're going to go into them. The elderberries are loaded with phenolic acids. Uh, so we have the cathic, the chlorogenic, the p chlomeric, the few furylic, gallic, and syringic are just some. Well, they're the main phenolic acids found in the elderberry, and we got got structures. Whoa, structures! The nice thing about these particular compounds is they're actually very stable. So if you start cranking the heat up. You know, it takes four hours to get any uh, real appreciable loss of these molecules from the heat. Um, so, you know, it's one of the things that usually doesn't get lost when you're making a jelly or a syrup or a candy, which is good because they have all sorts of cool powers. So let me, uh, oops, do, do, let me put up phenolic acids. And I think those of you who are watching on YouTube, uh, 
you may not get the entire link. Sometimes it looks like YouTube uh, doesn't allow me to post as many characters as Facebook does. Um, but one thing, uh, after the show, I'll go back and add all these, these links again to the YouTube uh, copy of this show. Okay, so we know what phenolic acids are. They're these basically tadpole type looking things. Whoops, I, I need to circle here. So what do they do? I'm having so much fun. Okay, so let's start with the caffeinic acid. First, even though it looks like the word caffeine, not related to caffeine, um, not a stimulant or anything like that, um, it is, however, a very strong antioxidant. So we talked about you know all the benefits of antioxidants. Uh, it's not quite as good as some of the earlier ones at busting up the cholesterol lipids in the blood, but it's okay. Um, but it, it's still good. Uh, but one of its key things, and there are some others, but one of the key things is it is an immune modulator. So what that means, it's sitting back, it's keeping an eye on what the immune system doing, what the immune system is releasing, what the immune system is attacking. And if it's starting to attack uh, things that the immune system probably shouldn't, and this is kind of a simplified model of everything that's going on, but it, it goes over to the immune systems and says, hey, chill, slow down, just take five, smoke if you got it. Um, yeah, you know, we got enough here. So that's really useful, especially in the case of the cytokine uh, effect. So in certain ways, elderberry is self-regulating. Now, in certain cases, uh, certain diseases and so forth, it really can uh, freak out. But in a lot of cases, uh, it's actually fairly decent at limiting itself. Okay. So we have the caffeinic acid, the chlorogenetic acid. Uh, one of the nice things about it, and that's, uh, well, if we went back, if you really want to go back, we can go back. Oh, I guess I don't have it here. Okay, sorry. Um, different shrubbery, you know, on it. Uh, one of the things it does is it grabs onto sugar in your food, in your drink, and only slowly releases it into your blood system. So it kind of slows down the, the digestion of sugar. And so you're, it helps control the blood sugar levels. Cool, especially if you're a type 2 diabetic. The pucumeric acid, cumeric, yeah, we'll go with pucumeric acid. Uh, this is an anti-inflammatory. So again, it's helping kind of regulate the cytokine production uh, and also help with other uh, like cortisol type inflammation uh, molecules. So it helps there. So think, basically, long story short, anti-inflammatory. Gallic acid. Uh, those of you who have heard me talk about oak trees, hear me go on and on and on about oak galls and all the medicinal properties of the gallic acid found in them. Gallic acid is found in elderberries too. Um, it's two main properties, a very strong antibacterial property in itself. Uh, from what I've been able to determine, it looks like it actually interferes with the membrane surface of bacteria and basically starts you know, causing big ulcers on their surface and they just kind of ooze out. So really cool, a very violent death for bacteria, which I'm okay with. Um, so that's one thing. Another really cool thing about gallic acid, though, and this is just coming to, to, to light, uh, might be four years now is when I started seeing the articles on it, but it the gallic acid uh, helps reduce the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Uh, so whoever was asking about Parkinson's disease earlier, the gallic acid is something that really helps. And what it's shown to do is one of the effects of Parkinson's disease is you get these, you know, think of them as protein dust bunnies collecting on the surfaces of the neurons. 
And so interfere with the signal transfer between neurons because you got this kludge stuck to it. Well, this gallic acid goes in and starts breaking apart that kludge of proteins. And so the neurons can better talk to one another again. So that's really cool. Here's the gallic acid. Hmm. Running on a margarita. Um, okay, so those are some of the phenolic acids. Okay, good. We have more. So this particular one has its own own page, and I'm going to put it. It's, it's just its individual link here because uh, just for like Tina and the other science nerds in there. Um, ferulic acid. So really, 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 really cool compound in elderberry. Um, one thing it's been shown to do is it does reduce the symptoms of Alzheimer's. Uh, so you have improved memory and mental clarity, uh, a good thing. Mechanism, still not sure. I think it's helping bust apart, kind of like with Parkinson's, uh, Alzheimer's has its own sort of protein clumps uh, that this may help start dissolving, but I'm not positive. That's just, again, kind of a scientific wild ass guess, a swag, but it's shown to help. Another thing, uh, reducing the hardening of arteries. So, and that goes back to busting up the plaque that can form and stiffen and clog and keep the arteries from expanding. Uh, so again, think of it as another one of those liquid drainos for your blood vessels. Anti-cancer, uh, both from its antioxidant abilities, uh, but also some other abilities to interfere with uh, the, the cancer cell's particular way of transmitting information in itself and to others. A um, lot of mechanisms involved there. Not going to go into those, but uh, very, very, very cool. So uh, it works to lower the blood pressure. A big part of that is by softening the arteries, deplacifying, you know, declogging the arteries. So if you're trying to pump blood through this, you know, a hole this big, well, actually that'd really suck, uh, you're gonna require a fair amount of pressure. But if now the hole is that big, hello, uh, you can pump a lot more blood or you can pump the blood you need uh, at a much lower pressure than you were before. So that's how one of the ways it helps lower the blood pressure is by you know, making the arteries, uh, well, the blood vessels uh, more flexible and also cleaning up the gunk. So you have, you know, it, it basically it enlarges the size of your blood vessels. Okay, helps against diabetes. Again, I'm not sure the mechanism. I assume there is some bonding with the sugar, but I'm not sure because uh, lowering blood sugar was not one of the effects I was able to find for this molecule. Um, but there is a number of studies showing it has beneficial effects uh, against diabetes. So I'm not sure the mechanism. Uh, I guess this is as good as mine. Okay, another one. Reduces menopausal symptoms, especially the hot flashes uh, and kind of the brain fog that uh, supposedly starts at that time. So, man, what was it, like episode 45 or something like that? I went deep into plants to help uh, support your brain. And just coming back to this, the elderberry, uh, I didn't talk much about it or at all. Uh, but once I started delving into it, there's some really good research on that. Uh, and both, well, the, the, the brain fog, we've seen some of the other compounds there. But the ferulic acid uh, also, I, I don't know if it's an estrogen mimic or a estrogen regulator or some other uh, female hormone regulator, but it's definitely been shown to uh, help reduce the, the um, menopausal symptoms. In addition to that, it helps reduce osteoporosis. So if you have a problem with not getting enough calcium, not doing enough you know, heavy lifting of weights to build up bone density, the ferulic acid found in elderberries 
uh, has been shown to help. Cool, huh? Okay. Uh, just, uh, okay, wait. Ah, uh, man, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Um, I'm thinking to, I want to say approximately one gram a day. Uh, I'm just reaching back to the formulation I came up with for the Medicine Man Plant Company, um, and it was a, it was one of the higher ones. But these things are so concentrated and so powerful. Uh, I think that one you actually end up taking three pills a day, but uh, either three or four. But in the end, it's still only around a gram of material max. So it doesn't take a lot. These things are really potent. Uh, what are you soaking them in? Uh, okay. Glycerin and, okay. Sorry, just looking at these things here. Okay. Um, okay, just seeing if there's any other uh, questions. Okay, uh, Ricardo, good question. Would a shrub made from the flowers have the same benefits? Definitely. Uh, especially plus the added benefits of the apple cider vinegar that's usually involved in a shrub. So a shrub, an elderberry shrub, awesome, awesome medicinal thing. You know what? Maybe, so next week I was going to actually make some things with elderberry or elderberry flowers, assuming I have flowers, you know, with the, the hurricane potential and the storms, uh, I'm kind of between elderberry flowers right now. We had some really bad storms come through Houston today and on Saturday, and my my flowers are pretty much gone right now, but elderberry produces a lot of flowers, so hopefully they'll be back. So next week we can actually make some things. Ricardo, remind me to to look into uh, a elderberry shrub recipe. Hello. Oh, yeah, if you want. Okay. Uh Okay, so, whoops. Okay. Hey, look, 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 look. Dun, dun, dun. It's, it's the exposure model. It, it's, it's mini weather. The now senior. I'm a senior in high school. She's a senior in high school. So I, I suspect this will be like the last time between now and maybe her wedding. <laughs> that I'll get to see any amount of her, you know, social butterfly, running around, meeting her friends, hanging out, breaking many a boy's heart, thank God. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she just wants, she misses you. And, I do, I do. But she's just too damn busy to help me. Oh, well. Still love her. Okay. Love you, Dad. <laughs> love you too. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Uh, ooh, wow. Okay, quick run through. Synergist, uh, syner synergic acid prevents di diabetes, anti-cancer, reduces cerebral ischemia, what, whatever the hell that is, uh, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, liver protector, neuroprotector, and anti-endotoxic. Endo uh, anti-endotoxic is really interesting. What that means is it protects the body from the particular toxins made by bacteria that cause humans so many problems, like the uh, flaxotoxin and so forth, it actually helps destroy that and prevent it from hurting humans. So really, really, really cool. Um, a number of like E. coli and some other bacteria produce these different toxins. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you're throwing up and, and diarrhea and all this thing is your body's trying to get rid of that. Um, the uh, the syringic acid in elderberry helps battle and destroy those bacterial poisons. Cool. So I mean, elderberry it's a it's a miraculous plant. And the compounds it has, the powers it has, the benefits it has, and the fact that it's found pretty much all over the world is just you know. There's a saying: "Beer is proof God loves us." Um, I gotta say, elderberry is way up there too. Okay. Uh, oh man, we didn't even get to the sterols. So I guess, uh, you'll have to jump in next week for those. 
Um, Cause it's a whole, there's, you know, three different sterols going in each with their own powers too. So I guess next week um, we'll finish up with the medicinal compounds of elderberry and then try and actually walk through the making of something with elderberry flowers, uh, assuming I have flowers to work with. Okay, Ricardo, that's always one of the questions. Let me put this up here quick. So how much do you have to take over a period of time uh, to see a difference? Couple issues with this. First, elderberries are not domestic. Um, and so the overall levels of these compounds uh, can change from plant to plant. And so you're not sure how much you're getting when you make, say, a tincture or a syrup or a jelly or a lozenge or something like that. Um, and then everyone's biochemistry is different too. So uh, basically figure, start with a gram a day, somewhere in the area of a gram a day, and see what happens. And go from there. And then if you start seeing good effects, you know, increase, the, or sorry, you know, keep it the same. If you're not seeing every, anything after two or three weeks, because it takes a while, because part of it is these compounds, some of the compounds get broken down right away in the body. So it takes time for them to reach a level in the body, like in the cancer cells and so forth, to start having an effect. So three weeks, a month, you know, something like that is not unreasonable. These are long-term supportive compounds to, to try and get your body back in order, maintain it the way it, it, it's supposed to be, and, uh, you know, just help with that. But it, it takes time. So some effects you'll see right away, but others, you know, especially uh, like the Alzheimer's and the uh, Parkinson's disease and some of those, I mean, it, 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 it can take two or three months, unfortunately, because you got to really start breaking down those, those protein dust bunnies in the brain. Uh, and then the brain has to start trying to pump up, you know, it's like a starting a car that hasn't been started for a long time. It's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and then eventually it catches and then you say, Oh, okay. Okay. What's going on here? Um, you know, it's not magic. Wish it were, and in a way, uh, it almost could be. <sighs> okay, Simone, yes, elderberry, elderberry should speak to you. There is a lot of things in nature that are speaking out, and I'm stuck with uh, that up there. Um, and if it's calling to you, it's probably for a reason. Okay, uh, Curtis, in a tea. So tea is good, but remember, uh, well, actually, so the proper way of making a tea, like with the flowers, is don't use boiling water. You don't boil the flowers. You, you, you want the tea more like 170, 180 degrees, and then let the flowers seep in there with a lid over the top to keep them trapped in the water, uh, and then drink them that way. Okay, uh, seems like people enjoyed tonight. Uh, the chemistry wasn't all that overwhelming. Um, hopefully, I mean, a main part of this was to share my passion with you. And one of my, I have a huge passion for elderberry um, and because it's such an amazing plant. And so, you know, trying to get you all to see this and see the benefits of nature. Now, FDA, you know, these statements are not supported by FDA, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, but they're supported by, you know, 20,000 years of experience. <sighs> wow, that's tiring. Okay, it is three minutes past nine. Um, sorry if I didn't answer your questions. I'll try and go back and try and figure uh, that out. Remember, these videos stay up on the Forging Texas Facebook page. So if you scroll down to the video section, you can replay it, or you can jump over to youtube and see it there i i see last time i checked i had 966 sus subscribers on youtube uh youtube won't even think about letting me earn money off these videos until i have at least a thousand 
subscribers and have watched over 40,000 hours of video. So I'm not holding you know, up high hopes there. Instead, you know, maybe throw five bucks into the pot to try and win a copy of Idiot's Guide Foraging and help me get a better computer. Okay, uh, time for me to go love on my family. So thank you all. Uh, remember, I'll see you tomorrow morning, 7.30 to 8 o'clock here, talking about whatever the hell we end up talking about. Okay, good night, everyone. End of broadcast.